Okay, I want to answer this following question that goes like this. Is it possible to explain the PAN law within Cubase and how we go about it? I know that the PAN law is very confusing for a lot of people, so let's dive in Cubase and check how we can work with the PAN law in our mixes. Hey, what's up, my friend? The Chris Lim here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you want to improve and speed up your mixing workflow, I'm going to urge you to check out my free workshop on how to create the perfect mix template. In this workshop, I share with you my own process on how I built my own mix template. And I also give you access to a free Cubase session you can base yourself on to create your own personalized template. So check it out. The link is down below. Now let's jump in Cubase and check what we have as far as the pan law goes. I'm going to click on project, go down to project setup. And this is where I'm going to find the pan law parameter, uh, which is set up by default and on all of my projects to minus three or equal power. I'm going to explain to you why in a moment. So let's bring that up to zero dB, which means that there is no uh, pan law applied. So no compensation whatsoever. So basically what the pan law is, is a compensation in level of a signal that is uh, pan to the far right or the far left that is then brought into the center. So there's a compensation going on because in theory, uh, when we have one signal coming out of one speaker, meaning to the far left or the far right, it's coming out in this case from one speaker. When you bring that to the center, that signal is going to come out from both speakers and that will be perceived by 3 dB louder. So this is the basic theory around it. I'm not going to dive into um, that physical and acoustical theory in this video, but this is what you need to to know. So what the pan law is going to do, it's going to compensate for that phenomenon. Okay, so it's going to bring down the center level by X amount of dB. So this way, when you pan a signal from the far left or the far right in the center, uh, it's going to be perceived at equal level or uh, it's not going to be perceived as loud than without the pan law applied. So let me show you. I'm going to go right in Cubase. Um, I'm going to leave that one to zero so you can hear what that sounds like without any compensation applied. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just activate a sine wave and I'm going to bring that signal to the left and pay attention when I'm going to bring it to the center. Pay attention to the level. Okay, so it sounds a bit louder. So this is what's happening when there's no compensation going on. When we have the signal coming out of both speakers, we are going to perceive it 3 dB louder. So I'm going to bring my pan law down by 3 dB. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to listen to that sine wave and see how it sounds like. It sounds way more equal in level. Okay, now we have like a more constant level across the board when we, uh, we go from the left to the center to the right and vice versa. Okay, so this is essentially what pan law is going to do. It's going to compensate for that level so it stays as equal as possible. So if we go back and check the pan law, we can also bring that down to minus 4.5 dB and also minus 6. Minus 3 is kind of the general and default value on most analog consoles, uh, to the exception of the SSL console that will run at a, uh, a pan level of minus 4.5. Now for minus six, when you sum everything to mono, okay, uh, that will increase the power level in voltage uh, by six dB, okay, in theory. Uh, so that means that all the centered elements in your mix, when you sum everything to mono, are going to be louder by 6 dB. So if you have your pan law set up to minus 3, like I had on my other video when I talked about uh, mixing in mono, uh, that means in this case that uh, the, the increase of uh, level is going to be at around 3 dB when you sum everything to uh, mono. So if you bring that down to minus 6, 
In theory, that means that all levels from left, right to the center are going to be at the same level. So some might say that is the solution for mono compatibility. Uh, actually, I'm going to say no, because when you set up your pan law, you do this at the beginning of your mix. It's not something that you're going to do midway through the mix or at the end of the mix. You set that up from the beginning of your mix. So in reality, it doesn't matter much at what pan law setting you set up your session at. You're going to compensate while mixing. So even if uh, uh, the center is brought down by 6 dB, when you're going to mix, all your centered elements are just going to be louder on your faders, you know? So you're going to compensate for the levels while while mixing. The only difference that it's going to make is if you uh, do some panning automation. And that's the reason why I set that up to minus 3 dB is because when I do some panning automation, if I do some in a mix, uh, I'm going to make sure that I have, I perceive the level the same when I pan the, the signal uh, from the far left or right to the center and vice versa. Okay, so this is why I set that up to minus three to keep my uh, my level, my panning level constant, you know, across the board. Uh, you can also choose equal power, which is similar to minus three. It's almost the same thing. Uh, it's going to be a reduction of minus three dB also. But I think there's a difference between the transition curves, uh, which makes the equal power sound in theory a bit more um, natural, I would say. So equal power can also be chosen. So those are my two parameters as far as pan law goes uh, that I like to work with. So minus three or equal power. But again, set that up at the beginning of the mix before you move forward. Uh, so this is basically what the pan law is, and it's a basic understanding of the concept of the pan law and how you can set that up in Cubase or your DAW. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave everything down below. And don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care and see you.